following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. Well, welcome back to Ninja Trader Live. I'll be your host, Tom Schneider, CMT with Ninja Trader for this segment, Traders Workshop, where we like to bring in our Ninja Trader ecosystem partners. Today is no different. We're welcoming back Michael Littick, back to the future trading, uh, who was on a couple weeks ago and just uh, really, really um, informed and entertained us. We thought we'd have him back. And today we're going to learn about an, an alternative way of looking at seasonality in the markets. How are you doing, Michael? I'm really great. I hope everyone at home is doing well here today. Thank you, Tom. Oh, my pleasure. Um, how's how's everything where you are? We're on the same coast, by the way. You know, it's 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 that time of year where you wonder if you bought too many uh, products with plastic bags and the world is actually on fire. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Maybe I should have got the paper. That's, um, that's right. North Carolina is interesting. We have 14 different seasons. You know, it's first summer, second summer, false winter, third summer, first spring. Uh, then they call it the the muddy season. Uh, and then we have uh, essentially um, a drought. And so it's just kind of fun to navigate all of that. When you live next to a river that swells when it rains too, it, you wonder when the guy from the Weather Channel is going to pull up in front of your house one day. <laughs> And that's where is you that get Jim out. Cantori. Oh, we're screwed. <laughs> that's that's where you get out your uh, you know your waders and walk around. And he's saying it's it's six feet deep, and you're walking around in ankle deep water, right? We brought a kayak out one time, and my <laughs> wife was not pleased with how close we got to the edge of it. And I think I have the heart of uh, a twelve year old boy in the body of an overweight fifty three year old man. And there's. Uh, there's a lot of conflict there sometimes. The mind is willing, but the jelly legs are, are weak. <laughs> so uh, that's good to hear. Well, uh, you know, we we talked last time about data mining. We talked about how um, analyzing data in a very specific way, right? Uh, you know, today's Wednesday. So looking at previous Wednesdays, really smart way to look at, at the markets, trying to find patterns. Um, that uh, are are patterns because they repeat, right? They there there's something you might be able to identify what happened before and does it happen again? Um, I think uh, you know you could take it on a broader scale, right? Um, we were talking about energy. We were talking about different ways cycles happen. So um, you know, I just was really it, it, for me when we had that discussion, it was just all about listening to you <laughs> and taking it in. It's very informative. Um, so you know, I don't know where you want to start today. Well, a lot of it is uh, it's been a long journey for us, and one of the things that we sort of look at when we go back as an engineer, I always try to look kind of a little bit to the side when you're looking at a new problem and you say, well, how have other people approached this? Mm -hmm. Right. Don't my father used to say, don't reinvent the wheel. There's right. a reason that things exist the way they do. And so sometimes that can kind of get you in trouble. Like uh, I'm a close follower of Tesla and Elon Musk. And I sort of waver between fanboy and, you know, uh, mocking his demagoguery it's it's a love-hate relationship but recently the the cyber truck came out right and love it or hate it it was different and in in one instance uh i saw a problem all of the cars that we drive are essentially designed with crumple zones and when you hit another car or another car hits you it's designed to absorb all that energy millions of cars are made that way and the cyber truck had a giga casting Anything in the truck has the word giga in front of it. It's a giga handle. It's a giga wiper. Well, the giga casting was essentially this solid block of cast aluminum, like our old matchbox cars used to be. 
Mm-hmm. And when it gets hit or anything hits it, it cracks. <laughs> oh. It doesn't absorb the energy. And so a lot of people are starting to find out if there's a minor fender bender, it's an $80,000 repair. Wow. So I always try to look, why are people doing it the way they do it or did it? And and so one of the things that sort of started to emerge when I felt around the landscape of what traders before us were really successful and did they have something that was foundational or curve fit to their time we sort of uh stuck with mr gan from lufkin texas who's a fascinating individual i mean you can't really say that about many like theodore roosevelt great president crazy riding horses doing all sorts of stuff in the parks um I think Gann is sort of that emblematic figure when it came to trading, and he has a different perspective. It's not so much seasonality with him as a connection, uh, sort of a tethering, if you will, between human nature, human behavior, maybe is a better way to say it, and our environment. So... For example, in this interview that he gave in 1909, uh, this is when he's talking to Richard Wyckoff, right? The mm. father of modern volume analysis. He's the ticker of invest, uh, editor of Ticker Investment Digest at the time. And, and he goes, it appears Gann has developed a new idea as to the principles governing how markets move. And here's what really threw me. He bases his operations upon natural laws which, though existing since the world began, have only recently been added to the discoveries that traders are employing. And what Gann says, and it blows a lot of people's brains out, they lose their minds, their gaskets pop, because in Wyckoff's opinion, at the end of the article, this guy is forcing traders to think and do research And paraphrasing from the article, which you can look up, just Google Gan Wyckoff interview. He says, the traders of our time don't like Gan because he's forcing them to think and do research. And most traders hate that. (laughs) That's my favorite line from there. So what Gan essentially says is you have this human being, essentially, who has probably, what, two to three miles of electrical cordage in terms of nerves and wiring. And there's this wireless charger in the sky that he refers to quite often in his works, the sun. And in essence, he's saying there's a direct correlation between how much energy that sun is sending and how emphatic and enthusiastic and excited you are versus how uh, maniacal and paranoid you can be. (laughs) And he says, hey, if we look closer at the the energy cycles, we could see or should see a correlation. So the back of my uh, Pixel 8 here has a wireless uh, coil in it. Essentially, an induction charger works by having a, a coil of wire and then another coil of wire in your charger on your nightstand. And it inductively charges the battery in your phone. Well, Gann postulates that markets are moving, in essence, on a grander macro scale. If three and a half million traders, or however many there are now, um, are responding to this power source, then understanding the cycles of that power source should have an implication. So here's a few uh, examples of stuff that we just started to um, dial into. The moon and the sun are essentially the sources and the reflectors of that energy. And this is just the basis or the foundation of some of the signals that we really trade with. But it's interesting to see, is it the chicken or the egg? And Gann says, why are you chasing the chicken? This is the egg. And you should Mm. focus on it. There's a cause and an effect. And if you know the cause, you can predict or determine the effect. So. So, oh, no, so Michael, yeah, Michael ahead, let, me, sorry. let me just jump in real quick. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, I think of kind of that uh, trope about um, agriculture traders 
uh, who are who are in Chicago, right? The pits were open. They trade right. in Chicago, and if it was raining in Chicago, you know, they would sell beans, right? Because it's raining in Chicago. There might be a drought in in you know where the where the actual soybeans are, but if it's raining in Chicago, yeah, you feel a little bit more bearish, right? Because that means a, a more fruitful uh, rain. Rain means more uh, production and prices go down, right? It's not reality, so to speak. You think about seasonal uh, seasonal affectional disorder, right? We feel better when there's you know with sun. Not everybody, but if there's no sun, we you know we can connect to that sun energy on a on a immediate basis. But what you're saying is let's let's take it broad, right? Let's take it to a, a broad scale, and it's not just about the individual uh, watching watching the environment. It's almost subconscious right it's, well yeah there's a lot of work that's been done on this when you say some people don't feel better uh when the sun is out the science is actually pretty solid on it and that's one of the advantages i think gan if he lived today he would have a field day with it so there's this professor uh out at um i think she's usc berkeley she has got a dual doctorate her name is valerie hunt and Valerie is not too far from JPL uh, laboratory, Jet Propulsion Laboratories in California. Okay. And she asks if she can use what's called a Mu room. And this is a room that they use to study uh, how astronauts would be affected by magnetic and electric field changes when they got up into space. And you can sort of interchange sunlight with magnetic field or electric field uh, numbers, they're directly correlated. The mm -hmm. more energy from the sun, the higher the magnetic and electric field. Sort of like rubbing a balloon on your head vigorously at a birthday party when we used to do such things and stick them on the wall right. and rubbing it sort of lackadaisically, half-heartedly like your dad used to do because he knew your mom would be mad if he didn't help. <laughs> and so <laughs> what she does is she, she basically has two buttons, an electric and a magnetic field button, and they're given three tests. Number one, complete a motor skills test. Number two, lean as far forward as you can without falling over. Number three, uh, tell us how you feel, affability scale on a scale of one to 10. And so when she turns the magnetic field up across the board, double blind study, they complete the test faster. They can lean farther forward than they normally did at steady state. And they feel great they essentially report a higher sense of consciousness. I feel like I'm thinking clearly those mornings you wake up and feel great. Well, fun fact, she turns that back to normal and then shuts the electric field off. So mm -hmm. completely different from the outside world, isolated, insulated. And now they can't complete the test. They can't stand up and they're crying. People are spontaneously weeping in the room. Get me out of here. I don't like it. And it actually reflects a lot of the studies that were done with miners who are somewhere, not like 14-year-olds, but actual guys mining underground. These guys who were essentially isolated from that energy that we would experience up top. And they're, uh, they're just coordinated. They're angry. There's interpersonal conflicts. They bring an artificial uh, field generator down into it, which is not as complicated as you think, to reproduce that energy condition. And everybody's getting along. They're completing their jobs. They're finishing their shifts. Um, you can extend this out to things we know about anecdotally in Alaska when there's less and less sunlight. There's a huge density of uh, tanning beds and artificial light salons. There's a higher incidence of alcoholism and depression and suicide. So the science is pretty solid on that, but where it gets tricky, and this is where Wyckoff made a really important point, people don't believe it, right? It sort of right. feels new agey, crystally, hippy dippy, but other people have really looked into it. For example, um, this is straight out of the Atlanta um, Federal Reserve Office report, and they started charting when the recessions were in relation to the solar cycles. So our sun is active more in certain periods and inactive in others. And they started to find that the recession either occurs at a cycle low or more often than not at a cycle high. Mm -hmm. um, and when you start to really delve down into it, it gets kind of weird 
because a lot of the conflicts in the world are occurring at the, so the solar cycle highs. This is World War I, Chinese Civil War, World War II, Pearl Harbor, Korean War, Vietnam War. This is the Tet Offensive of the Vietnam War, the bloodiest battle, and Russia has basically uh, moved into someone else's sovereign territory three different times, here in Czechoslovakia, here in Afghanistan, and in 2015, they moved into Ukraine. And so we have 9-11 at a peak. We have the Benghazi ISIS scenario here, Bosnia, the Iraq-Kuwait war. All of these things seem to be occurring at a moment in time GAN predicted when the energy is at a maximum and populations psychologically, psychologically physiologically, they're at their frazzled nerves end. And so when we kind of delve down deeper into it and we're looking historically, this is something people have been studying uh, for a really long time. You can go back even further. And uh, I have a chart here. I wasn't prepared to pull it up, but I'll recognize it when I see it. A lot of the older stuff occurs at solar cycle highs, including the American Revolution and the French Revolution and um, the Berlin Wall coming down. All of these things are happening at, yeah, there we go, at moments in time that are directly correlated to this apex in energy. Can you see here, July Revolution, French Revolution, American Revolution. And so you can go down that rabbit hole pretty deep, right? But there appears to be on the surface a cause effect relationship, the same way your phone recharges, you physiologically seem to recharge. And so GAN kind of keys in on that. And we we sort of turned, again, big fans of Ninja Trader, right? All right, let's take all of these ideas and turn it loose on the world's greatest platform. What can it show us? Can we disprove this or not? So this one example, MNQ, I know you guys look at this a lot. This is a daily chart. And this is actually charting something called the apogee perigee uh, distances. So the Earth, for example, is uh, orbited by the moon, which travels around it in an ellipse. It's not a perfect circle. It's an ellipse. And there are two points in the cycle, a focal length that is closest and farthest away. So if the sun is affecting us, if this magnetic electric field is as relevant as it was when Valerie Hunt and Gann were looking at it, we should feel its effects more when the heat lamp, as it were, in the sky is closer and feel it less when it's farther away. So the dots on this chart on the MNQ daily are actually those astrological or astronomical events. When you see a green dot on the MNQ, it's when the moon is as close to us as it can be. So we're feeling wireless phone charging energy at that moment. So that seems to be good for Gann's theory anecdotally. And the last two signals on this chart, we had the uh, apogee event. Moon is as far away as it can be on the 24th. And then this event right here kicks in on a weekend on August 9th. And you can sort of see there appears to be something going on here where these pivots are occurring in places we wouldn't expect them to. Um, if we chart the solar cycles a different way, we can start to use some interesting math because Ninja Trader is as cool as it is. So, for example, if we go back and look at that chart that we were just looking at with the solar cycles, we asked Ninja Trader, hey, if we know when the last couple of cycles are, we know where the high was and we know where the low was. NASA's pretty good with this data. They publicize how many spots are on the sun. You can see where it goes. Max, 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 lower, 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 min, 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 zero, zero. And so what we're able to do with this next tool is say, okay, we know the high, we know the low. We can project where the next high is likely to be using a fib tool. Or we can tell Ninja, project 100% of that time gap. So T1, T2. Then we can take this gap and we can start to split it into smaller gaps. And then we can split that gap into smaller gaps into smaller gaps and use 
essentially Fibonacci retracements, but in time instead of price. And that's what this tool is. So all of these signals on this chart are based on the last cycle high and low of the sun when it was most active and least active. We project that gap forward into time and then we split it into little chunks. So you can see here what Gann sort of gives us, right? His legacy is predictive as opposed to lagging. So right now I see where these next nodes are, where the next red dots and green dots. Those are days we haven't arrived at. And the green signals here and the red signals here are times that we were waiting for when there were no bars there. So we're starting to see more and more evidence that, hey, this article, this 1909 uh, interview had some really important information. Maybe people are just reacting to their environmental factors. If we understand what those factors are, we can predict it. Right. So if you live next to a neighbor who owns a truck with an air horn, or I had a friend who lived next to a guy with a, a Mustang and the guy had all the features, all the upgrades, and he had like no exhaust on it. Six o'clock every morning. <laughs> oh my God, this kid. Every six o'clock, that kid would wake up and rev his $80,000 car. That was a cycle. You could predict the behavior of his neighbor, if you understood the cause of that effect. That neighbor right. is going to be in a bad mood, probably not a good time to call him and see if he wants his roof replaced. Right, right. It's <laughs> a bad time to do that. And so when we, when we kind of come out and look at it even further, these are the signals that are based on the actual uh, phases of the moon. Uh, full moon, new moon, first quarter, uh, third quarter, moon half full and empty. And so we sort of see that these things are sort of coalescing and congregating here now where there's a solar signal there, there's an, uh, an apogee perigee event there, and then a lunar cycle. These things are kicking in predictively. I know when the next full moon is coming. You can look on Google, for example, and then I know when the next third and uh, fourth quarter are. We can plot these on the chart. I'm just kind of emphasizing by hand. So, so Michael, question for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I want to go to that last chart. Those dots are really about time, not not price levels, right? Of course, sure. Because 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 we're trying to catch inflection points, or we're trying to say, okay, this is where this is uh, we're at the farthest, we're at the closest. Did you ever do? Do you have the ability, and uh, or have you thought of combining that longer solar cycle that? you can get from noah or whoever it is um the sunspot uh, a cycle <clears throat> which is i don't know if it's 11 or 22 years whatever the, the 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 cycle is and combining it with um that more uh a lunar cycle to say okay well we're at we're at a period right now where sunspots are off the off the charts and we expect it to be off the charts even more going forward so the effect of the lunar cycle might be a little bit more because it's more intense in the sun sunspot cycle. Like, do you combine cycles like that? Sure. So we always have customers who are we we call them the HTF guys, the higher time frame guys, okay. and they want to put they they make uh they I call it an Italian sandwich. They got mortadelle, they got the pepperoni, they want to put the mozzarella, they want to put the capricol, they want to put everything on one sandwich. Right. I want to see when everything lines up yeah. and there's value in that. But what we find tends to happen is people will generally, um, when we come back down here, they'll align with one of the techniques. So they'll look at the solar cycle. They'll look at the apogee perigee. They'll look at the lunar phases uh, in particular and sort of latch onto it. But if you want to layer those things together, certain people are wired that way to really see all of those things coalescing and coagulating at the same moment. Of course you can, but any other platform, NinjaTrader uh, withstanding is not going to be able to handle that, which is why if someone asks about company A or B, we kind of politely tell them, look, you, you can't do that. It, it can't handle the processing power that this program can. But you, you could, for example, so 
if you took the ES signal right here and you came over and you said, hey, I really want to see how those apogee perigee events line up, you can align those two things together quite easily now uh, with the software. And you can see that we had an apogee event coming in right here and then a solar cycle event right there. Wow. And so that could be a point where you're looking to uh, to get in. If you had a perigee event here and then a lunar cycle, I like to connect them kind of like you connect a computer with a, a network cord. If you ever turn a modem on, your my wife is constantly saying, reboot the modem. <laughs> There's right. Her favorite show is playing and usually stops at the most dramatic moment. There's that moment. Uh, Tom, you know, when the lights start flashing, when they're communicating with each other. Yes. And I like to think of that when, like you just said, when this signal and this signal come together, I'll actually connect them and tether them with an invisible network cord to say, oh, okay, these things are, uh, are on track with each other. Let's actually come in here and I'll cut the, the distance in half so we can get a better correlative view of whether or not that's the case. Well, and I, I like that with any indicator um, where you can line it up with another indicator because basically you're just lining up evidence or lining up evidence is probably the wrong term probabilities, right? So, sure. you know, if, if I see something, uh, you know, lining up, I feel a little bit better with, you know, more confidence that I can say, well, on this indication, you know, uh, apogee, uh, you know, per perigee, um, indicator versus the solar cycle versus uh, lunar cycle, whatever it is. And it might correspond with a momentum indicator that somebody uses or, you know, your own and, you know, somebody's individual analysis. I feel better about that. Yeah. What, a really interesting thing starts to emerge um, when we're talking about this idea of uh, things lining up. What I found, all right, you can sort of sense that I'm hesitant to want to layer things on top. What I found is that different markets will respond to different energy inputs uh, more resonantly. So for example, I know this ES solar cycle chart is sort of locked in. It's, it's, um, it's in sort of a phase lock. I know mm -hmm. those signals are going to be near highs and lows most of the time. And that reflects what GAN was showing people back in the time of that article. A guy named William Gilly, director of imports, followed him around and documented all of his trades and said, look, half of his, uh, five to six out of 10 of his signals were at exact highs and lows. And so we kind of come back here and we're like, whoa, there's a pivot, there's a pivot, there's a pivot, there's a pivot. And so we're sort of seeing a reflection of that method a century later. But um, like, for example, if, if we come back and look at the MNQ, with the Orion stuff, we can start to scan for other markets that have more of a correlative effect. So I can look and say, hey, how well does this work with oil, for example, or how well does this work with gold? Mm -hmm. And uh, I can put gold on here instead. And what I tend to find is that the markets will generally align better with one of the methods, which is weird. It sort of wants you to know, hey, I don't like uh, chili, but I do love sushi, right? right. There's, an, there's an element of this where gold obviously is responding better to the Orion signals, uh, which are the apogee perigee than it is to the, uh, the solar cycles. And so I like to see which market, the market will sort of tell you what method works best with it. Um, so we have those three choices to choose from. Do you want chicken? Do you want fish? Or do you want steak? <laughs> I'll take then, all three. Yeah. And so what <laughs> this really does is it sort of sets us up for the intraday stuff now. And, you know, this is where the rubber hits the road and where a lot of people get lost with GAN and time theory. Most of the people that approach this historically tend to elevate it to what I call monk Himalayan monk status, Right. You, you reach a point where, you know, like you were saying, is it raining? Is it sunny? Where is Jupiter? Where's Venus? You know, where's Uranus? But I'm bump. And um, there's no practical 
sort of weaponizable thing that emerges from it. You just sort of sit there like the Mike Myers guru movie where he's, you know, Mariska Hagate, Mariska Hagate. Right. You, you sit at the feet of some guru in this Himalayan cave and you don't know how to trade it. Well, I, when do I go long? <laughs> right, right. All will be revealed if you just study at my feet. And so what tends to emerge right here is this idea of now I can bring that if I understand the foundation of it, if, I've able, if I'm able to prove to myself that there's at minimum a correlative effect between human behavior, uh, psychology, physiology, and our environment, we can then, like you said, start to anticipate smaller and smaller and smaller movements. This is an MNQ one minute chart that we've been trading with um, all morning here in our live class. And I was particularly excited to meet with you guys here today just to sort of show, you know, there are actual places where we, we kind of got long and got short and across different accounts that we, we, uh, we watch for here. And you can basically see shorting at the sell times and covering at the buy times. And then in this most recent uh, set of uh, signals here, up $72 now, having bought at the predicted buy time at 10.59. So you always want to be careful. We've sort of set the stage here. The foundation of time seems to be based in energy, and energy seems to have an influence on psychology. So your prior guest, you were asking about home heating oil. This this is a weaponizable uh, format that I want to look at with us in our next meeting. Um, we can come and look and see what was expected for oil on a five minute chart or on a 60 minute chart. When is the next turn anticipated, right? We can look at oil on a daily chart using a different method whose foundations are based on the same things that you and I are exploring over here. But if we're solid at the foundation and we understand, hey, there's this cosmic flashlight and when it's really bright, we lose our minds, then we can start to look really closely at the intraday stuff, knowing there's actual uh, there's actual evidence to support going deeper and trying to find longs and shorts intraday. So it, it's a wild journey. The big yeah. picture, though, <laughs> seems to support that it's worthy of our exploration and looking deeper and finding a trading system based on it. Sure. Sure. No, Michael, this has been great. It's been uh, too quick. Um, you know, I'm That's looking forward to, 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 to keep going down that, uh, that path because it is fascinating. Um, but I, I want people, cause we, we are running out of time. Sure. Exactly this, where, where can people find you? We've been around at the same website now for 15 years, proud member of the Ninja Trader ecosystem and strongly encourage your viewers. There's such uh, a plethora of resources. Ninja's done a great job curating uh, people like myself and the prior uh, speaker, other men and women here who've done a lot of great work and research. Um, our tack on it happens to be time. And if you want to explore a little bit more, uh, there's a place for you to take a video demo on our website, backtothefuturetrading.com. Uh, we love sci-fi movies that play on the idea of time and time travel, true detective and outer range and back to the future. And, and uh, of course, Star Trek with uh, all of that fun stuff. Let's go back and make uh, transparent aluminum to bring a whale into the future. <laughs> Still trying true. to figure it's that illogical. out. Yeah, very logical. But Scotty was the man and he typed really quickly and now we have transparent aluminum. So if they want to learn more, that's a great place to start. And I'm looking forward to being back here with you guys here in our next setup. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.